Hey, Confermans. Pastor Roger here. It's great to be with you today. I want to talk to you about baptism. We are on part two of Word with Water. And as we go along, I want you to be looking for some very particular things, and I'll tell you what you need to be looking for. One, you'll be looking for Great Commission. What is that? What are sacraments? What are three things that make up a sacrament? What gifts do we receive in baptism? And what is grace? And how is baptism a gift of grace? Now, if you didn't get all that written down that I just gave you, don't worry. I'll go over this again with you all. First, the Great Commission. If you have your Bible handy, I would encourage you to pull that out because I'm going to read Matthew 28, 16 to 20. These are the last four verses of Matthew's gospel. Now, these are have Jesus' last words as he is about to go up into heaven. It says, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them, then when they saw him, they worshipped him, and some, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is called the Great Commission. This is uh, to commission someone is to give them a task, to equip them for a particular job, and then send them out to do that. The Great Commission that people were being commissioned to do was what? Go out into all the world and baptize and teach the world about God's love and God's grace for them. That's our job. That's been the job of the gathered believers, the church, ever since it started. The Great Commission. And did you notice something really interesting there? It said, let me look it up here for you. It said, when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. See, we don't have to have it all together to follow Jesus. We don't have to have all the answers and have it all figured out. In fact, that's one of the great things about being a Christian. We don't have to have it all figured out. None, none of us does. Your, your parents don't have it all figured out. Your pastors don't have it all figured out. So if you at times feel a little confused that you don't have it all figured out, well, welcome to the club. But your process of learning about baptism and learning about the faith and coming to worship regularly and studying the Bible and praying and talking to others about this is a way to help understand that to answer those questions that you might have. And God's not condemning us if we have questions. In fact, he wants us to have questions. He must have thought it was pretty important to have questions and to use those because he didn't give people a test at the end saying, now, after you do this, I want to test you before you just head out and tell all these people about me. No, he said he'd be with them. And... Then he sent them out and the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 16 to 20. Baptism is our relationship and the beginning of our relationship with God, even if we don't fully understand what that means. Now, for many of us, we were baptized when we were babies, such as me and Pastor Jennifer and lots of us. But not all of us were baptized that way, but Many of us were. Now, you might wonder, why in the world do we do that? I mean, they didn't even know what was going on. Well, that's to show how God's grace 
is. Grace is God's undeserved love, undeserved merit poured out upon us. And baptism is an illustration of God's grace. And what better illustration than to have a baby receive this gift of the forgiveness of sins, eternal life, and also help over sin, death, and the power of the devil. Those are the benefits of baptism. Forgiveness of sins, eternal life, and power over sin, death, and the power of the devil. Even when they didn't realize you were getting it. Now, as you learn about the faith and grow in the faith, then it becomes deeper and richer. But God claims each of us in our baptism and says, you are mine. There's nothing that can happen in the world that's going to change that. That I'm going to love you no matter what. Just like the love of your parents is always there no matter what. And nothing would ever change that. It's the same with baptism, with our heavenly parent. And as we get to learn more about that, we get to grow in that. Now, let me give you an illustration that works for me, and hopefully it'll work for you. You received gifts even before you knew what gifts were or why you were getting gifts. You received gifts of Christmas gifts or birthday gifts even before you realized what it was all about, what the days were about or or what the day was. You probably found the wrapping paper more exciting or the box more exciting than the gift in many ways. Baptism is being given this great gift. And as a baby, oftentimes, and then we have the opportunity to unwrap that gift and to play with the gift inside and to understand and to grow into that gift. Isn't that a wonderful way that God works? That God's grace is always given to us, even when we don't fully realize it. God's grace, God's undeserved love and merit is the way that God gives us this gift. Now, how do we receive this gift? We receive it through, well, faith. Faith is us accepting that gift and learning about it. Even when we have doubts, even when we don't understand, even when we have to ask questions. And that's part of what baptism is all about and learning about it. In fact, the process that you are in right now is a process of confirmation, confirming that decision that your sponsors and parents made for you or we also call this affirmation of baptism. Affirmation means saying yes to a decision made earlier. Saying, affirming the gift of baptism. Now, you might think that that's a one and done thing, but it isn't. It's something that we do every day and learning about God's grace and God's gift. It's something that we claim every day. And we thank God for every day. Now, you might think it odd. Why do we baptize? Well, we baptize with water because that's what it said in the Bible to do. That's how John, who baptized Jesus, was doing baptisms. And that's how we are washed into the kingdom. Now, we talk about baptism of being a sacrament. And that's a word that is kind of hard to get our head around. Well, I want to give you a little lesson on what a sacrament is. It comes from a Latin word. And Latin was the language that the Romans spoke when Jesus was around. They were speaking Latin. And Jesus uh, was speaking a form of of Hebrew called Aramaic, but the Romans were speaking Latin, and and they said a sacramentum was an oath or allegiance 
or an obligation that a soldier would make to the emperor. And it would be a, an oath or allegiance or an obligation that would be permanent. And they would be literally swearing their lives to the emperor to say, no matter what happens, they are always going to hang on to that and, and do exactly what the emperor would tell them to do, no matter what. Well, the ancient Christians took that word and kind of flipped it around. They talked about a sacramentum going the other way. They talked about God making a sacramentum with his people. That God is making an oath or an allegiance or a covenant with his people that would be forever and would be permanent. And that God would always remember it even to the end of the age and nothing could ever change that. And that we are living that promise forever. That we are in a covenant or relationship. We use that word covenant a lot. And that means we are in a relationship with God. Now, we Lutherans believe in two sacraments. One is baptism. And another that you'll learn about in a short time is Holy Communion. And those are ways that God makes a covenant, a relationship, an oath, an allegiance with us and, and offers us to be in relationship to him. And there are three things that make up a sacrament. Word, element, and promise. Word, element, and promise. Word, that means holy word. God's word. It must be stipulated by Jesus to do this. Jesus said, go and baptize, just as we read from Matthew 28, 16 to 20, and the Great Commission. It must have an element, something earthly, tangible, touchable in that. And of course, in baptism, the element is what? Water. That water is a sign of cleansing, a sign of renewal, a sign of refreshment, a sign of life. And then also it has the third element, a promise, that it gives us a gift, which is forgiveness of sins, life eternal. It rescues us from sin, death, and the power of the devil. So the promise is, Forgiveness of sins, life eternal, and a rescue of sin from sin, death, and the power of the devil. And what happens when you're ready to take on these promises for yourself? Well, we've already talked about that. It's called affirmation of baptism. And that's what's going to be happening on October 11th for several of your classmates. And you're invited to come with your families and sit in the cars and watch that because it'll be taking place right on the west side of the church by the parking lot. And you can tune in your radio and we'll give you the the uh, frequency to tune into and you can participate along with them. Now, where do baptisms usually take place? Well, they can take place any place. Usually for us in a church building. But I've also done baptisms in hospitals and at homes, and it can be done in a river. It can be done over in a creek. It can be done virtually any place where one would have the word, the element, and the promise. Now, in the water we use, is that holy or a special water? Now, it might surprise you that the water that we use is ordinary tap water. We get it out of the faucet, just like you would get water out of the faucet to take a drink or to take a bath. Now, some Christians use water that is specially blessed called holy water, but we Lutherans don't subscribe to that because we believe that all water that God gives us is holy. And the word holy actually means set apart or special. 
So we believe that all water that God gives is holy, is set apart, and is special, and should be treated in that way. So God uses in that ordinary water. Now, how do we use that? Well, we use water in a variety of ways, as we talked about, for drinking, washing ourselves, and doing other things, nourishing the animals and crops, and throughout the Bible, and all creation, God uses water to bless and renew his people as a sign of God's constant blessing and renewing us through baptism. In fact, life could not exist without water. Well, we've covered a lot of territory today in talking about baptism. We've talked about grace and we've talked about the three elements that compose a sacrament. We've talked about what a sacrament is and the two sacraments that we confess. And so you have a lot to think about and a lot to celebrate of how God gives one this gift. So as you prepare to meet with your leaders this week, I want you to think about, well, your baptism and the great gift that that has been for you. And talk about what that means if you haven't had a chance yet to do that. What that means to them. What your parents hope this means for you. And how they have been raising you in that. And also, how can you remember that you are God's child in the next week? And what difference does that make? and how you treat others, how you treat yourself, how you treat ordinary earthly things of the world. It's been good being with you. I look forward to, to being with you again. One of these days, we'll be with each other again in person. But until then, we're praying for you, and may God be with you. I have a prayer as we close tonight. Dear God, through water, your living word came to us and made us your children. Don't let us forget that we're always yours no matter what. Keep us safe this week and return us safely to each other soon so that we might continue to learn about you and grow in your love. Through your Son, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Peace to you.